Our special guest today, beautiful Melissa Lawson, Hello. the 2008 winner of season six of Nashville Star. Wow, it's really, it's an honor for me. I'm excited. I'm yeah. excited to be here. I'm excited that you're here. I met you um, because our children go to the same school. Yes. They go to PAC in um, South Lake. It's a performing arts conservatory. And we have had a show about that school on before. So go check that out because the place is amazing. And um, we are very blessed that our children have this place. And then as parents, we're blessed to get to know each other and get to know each other better. And um, when I got to know you, we went to a little dinner and had a couple margaritas and we started talking. And I was like, <laughs> oh, my goodness, you need to come on the show. You have a story like no other. I mean, unbelievable. Oh, thank so you. we're looking forward to meeting you, getting to know you. And why don't we just get started and tell us a little synopsis where you grew up, how you grew up and all that. Okay, so I live in Arlington, Texas. I'm from Arlington. I grew up there. I live next door to my parents in the house I grew up in. They're wow. like old school. Oh, awesome. Like <laughs> you move, you stay, you know, <laughs> 40, 40 years plus in the this same house. This is a European way. That's what we yeah. do. <laughs> so, um, so pretty much, I'm, you know, I'm an Arlington girl. I love the city. Um, but I, I, I loved growing up there, but it was, it was rough for me. I was uh, bullied really bad oh. in school. Why? And I don't think my, you know, bullying back then wasn't prevalent like mm -hmm. it is now where people talk about it and all of that. So it was rough. Like I had this very happy childhood from a standpoint of at home until I was, you know, kindergarten. But the minute first grade hit, it was it was stupid. It started that grade? early? Yes. I, I had, had, I had a uh, bleeding ulcer in first grade, like no kidding. <gasps> what happened? First grade, <laughs> how old is worry that? worry and stress and See? being overwhelmed <clears throat> and just all of that together. Of course, now I can look in retrospect and go, why was it? You know, but I was just being kind of tortured, so to speak, at oh school goodness. and by these kids all the time. So it was rough. It was it was a specific group of girls that just had it out girls, for me. of course. Yeah, they did. They had in it out first for grade. Mm -hmm. Back it's amazing. And it went on went pretty much went on for for my whole life. So no. for my whole school life um, until I left for a performing arts school myself at fifteen, Where did you which go? PAC is modeled after. It was a it was a professional youth conservatory, um, performing arts high school in Fort Worth, and they closed down my senior year. So I got stuck back at the public high school with those girls. No. <laughs> That gave has me to be such a nightmare. A hard time. It was horrific. I told my dad, please let me get a GED. I was only two credits shy of graduating. And he was like, no, no daughter of mine's going to do that. And like I said, old school. So I was like, okay. So I just went for half a day, did my business, got in, got out, got out of there. Wow. So. And so PAC is modeled after the school you went to? Yes. That's pretty amazing, too. Yeah. So Dana and I actually. We didn't go to school together because we're, I don't know, maybe five, six years apart, but we both attended this school. Oh, so that's wow. uh, when I found out that PAC existed. It was always my dream. I thought one day I'll have a school like that because it was life changing mm -hmm. for me. And I thought, wouldn't it be great, you know, to offer that? And so when I found out PAC existed, I was like, oh, my gosh, I got to see if these boys have any interest in, in going that's so great i i love the school i can't ever talk enough about it because, i know and then marcel always says i wish that school I had did. existed for yeah. me yeah <clears throat> so you then graduated mm -hmm. and then what happened um well i met my um my i have seven boys their their ages seven nine. boys seven boys everyone that yes. you actually gave birth to <laughs> that I gave birth, birth to actually, seven yes. seven boys like are there he, twins in there or just no nope. all one in a time I got my first two are thirteen months apart my last two are fourteen months apart but other than that there's no twins so I've oh, got wow. I had five in seven years my first five um, Maverick is nineteen Harlan's eighteen Zayden's fifteen Xander's thirteen Riker's eleven and then I've got my babies, uh, Beckett is five and Phoenix is four. <laughs> so, oh yeah. Oh my gosh, you're busy. <laughs> it stays pretty crazy around, but I'm, you know, I mean, overall I'm blessed. The first five about drove me into the ground because they were all little all the time for a while. I cannot and I, imagine. About the time I recovered and thought, I'm free, they're in school. <laughs> this is so great. And then God was like, no, here's Beckett. And I was like, what? <laughs> <laughs> oh, and here's another. Oh, you know. So, wow, that yeah. is busy. Yeah. I like look at you and I literally in my head go, how? I don't understand. <laughs> I did I did the opposite. I had my kids to totally 
apart, spread out. like spread out, because I didn't think I could ever handle that. That's all. Yeah. One. I don't know if I really ever thought to myself, I'm, you know, how am I handling this? I mean, I would get <laughs> asked all no the choice. time, <laughs> but it's just, you just do it. I mean, it's sheer survival. Like you're mm-hmm. just doing it, doing it, doing it every day in, day out, day in, day out. And, you know, obviously I failed in many ways, many ways I did okay. And, you know, so I don't know where you failed because they're crazy, <laughs> great, great, great kids. Oh, so they're, they're beautiful human beings. They're thank sweet. You. They're smart. They, I mean, I don't see any problems. So. <laughs> yeah. Um, but so take us back to when you met. So it, I met did, their dad when I was 17. Okay. Um, and uh, so my first five, I was uh, married and, and with him for over 20 years. Wow. Um, and so my, my life pretty much was met him when I was 17, graduated. He's a musician. Also, he plays keyboards. We met at karaoke. Like, <laughs> so no <way>. crazy. <laughs> um, I met him and I was like, I'm marrying that guy. And I ro- he was 14 years older than me. I could even care less. And I'm, I came from this very conservative and even lived this way probably until my mid to late thirties, just this real conservative, like perfect life. Everything must be perfect. Mm. I expected it of myself. I expected it of people around me. My expectations are extremely high. Um, You know, obviously in retrospect, I was just causing myself a lot of pain and grief, but I had no, I didn't even know, like, I didn't even know I was trying to live this, this perfect image management kind of life. It's just kind of what I learned. And then I carried it on into adulthood. Yeah. So I met Rick um, I tried college several times. I've always been an entrepreneur at heart. I've owned several companies and businesses and I love business, um, but also love singing and performing. So I had, you know, done some dance and musical theater and that kind of stuff. But I, a friend of mine introduced me when I was 13 to country music and it wasn't really the country music that drew me as much as it was singing with a live band oh. because in Texas there were these Opry's, right? So right. we still oh, have yeah. Grapevine Opry and we still have, um, I love live music. Yeah. They, they and have these Arlington house bands too, right? What, what's that called? In we Arlington? used to have Johnny high, yeah, 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 but we don't have him anymore. Oh, no. But, um, so I just loved the opportunity to be able to go and sing with these live bands and so that's kind of how it started was him inviting me to Great Van Opry because you had to like either know somebody or be really great to, I mean, even get an audition to get on the show. There was a long waiting period, kind of like Johnny High's too. Um, and I did Johnny's and I did Great Fine. And then I found my home in a little Opry called Bur- the Burleson Jamboree. And it kind of became Burleson my home. Is that where... Um uh, Kelly Clarkson. Cl- Kelly Clarkson. She's from Burleson. Yeah, yeah. that's what I thought. Uh-huh. uh-huh. And so I, I sang there probably for six or seven years. I mean, every stinking weekend. Wow. Like I was kind of like the queen of that jamboree, you know. And then <laughs> when they, did you start that? How old were 13. you? 13. Oh, wow. You sang what? then yeah. live. Oh, okay. When did you know that you wanted to sing? Probably by, by fourth grade. I was about 10. I knew that it was something I wanted to do. I can remember as going far, as far back as being five years old. And just having a knowing in my mind that I was going to be financially successful in life. I was going to have a platform. I was going to be in my mind, you know, famous or whatever. Uh, I look at it differently now, but I just had this like internal knowing. I don't know how to explain it. It just was there. I mean, I literally can see it in my mind being thinking about it that early on. But by the time I was 10, I was doing the school talent shows and things like that. Um, was you know, your voice like did people when you were singing would they say wow you have they would a gift yeah. Yeah, yeah they would say something and and obviously I was like oh yay you know but I was really hard on myself I still am I uh, you know people will say <laughs> even when we went to Nashville we did uh, Landon was like please please do karaoke and I was like I don't want to do karaoke <laughs> and they had live band karaoke so I was like what? I'll do that uh-huh. so they had the live band there and you go pick your song. And I was like, okay, I'll do that. That's fun to me. Yeah. You know, even if we totally mess it up, like I don't even care, but it's just, I don't know. It's a psyche thing, I'm sure. But anyway, so we did, we did live band karaoke and he was begging me and I had had a horrible, I've been getting over sickness for like three weeks. Um, so I was maybe what I'd call 60, 70%, you know, but he's like, I mean, you're 70%. It's like everybody else's, you know, 180% or whatever. <laughs> right. But 
but I never really put that in my mind because I'm always my expectation, as I it's said, of myself is very high. So um, when I go out, I want it to be I Perfect. want it to be the best I can deliver. Right. So you went up there. Insane. I did. It was fun. <laughs> you know, we had a good time. I People think had to be shocked. They did. We didn't. Obviously, I don't like to go, oh, I'm the Nashville star. You know, <laughs> like I don't I don't like to walk around and feel like I have this label that I need to announce, you know, to people. If they ask, I'll tell them or if they bring it up, I'll say something. Um, but generally speaking, I don't, you know, use that as like, hey, when you walk in the room, <laughs> right? Hello, I'm here. I've arrived. You know, I just don't. Um, right. I don't know. There, I'm sure some of it. I'm sure has to do with pride. Some of it is humility, and some of it is just insecurity. To be honest, mm-hmm. I don't want people judging me for for a label because it is amazing to me in my life. I've just noticed. You know, you get treated so differently based on. I've just always wanted people to like me for me. Yeah. Right. So, you know, and I think also, you know, I've struggled with my weight. Marcel and I were talking about that before we started. And this is a lifetime battle. Like as long as I can remember, at least, you know, high school and up. But mentally, I struggled with it even earlier. I would do diets when I didn't even need to. I was like 10 and 12 years old. So crazy. Wow. Um, so um, <clears throat> I've taught the boys, you know, about eating well and trying to take care of your body and Yet I still struggle doing it myself in any consistency, you know, but um, I think that's it. It's like almost like a shell. It's like my protection. Mm -hmm. People can ask me questions and, hey, if they'll get to know me past this, what they see, then I know that they're genuinely genuinely interested, Mm -hmm. you know, versus, oh, because they could care less about me if I walk in the door. But if I get on the stage and I sing all of a sudden, I'm. I'm, oh my gosh, let's talk to you. You're amazing. But before then they don't care. And, and so there's this weird dynamic that happens that I, that I haven't quite figured out, you know, like, how do you, how do you do that? Because like, I would love in my mind, I look like (laughs) y'all in my mind. I'm walking around in my bikini. I'm looking pretty hot, but no, after I've birthed seven babies, that's not what's going on behind. I think you look amazing. Yeah. Look, first of all, like, and confidence is a big thing. Like, <clears throat> I feel like the more confident you are, like you could look better than even the person you think is like tiny, tiny, like in your head. I feel like sure. people who have confidence in what they look like and who they are, are more likely to stand out than people who don't. Sure. I, well, I think I that. would, I would yeah. agree. And I think for me, the stage is that place. Yeah. Um, and, and you e- can and even platforms mm-hmm. like this, mm-hmm. you know, or that place. Like I, I do feel like I have a voice and I have a platform. Um, I think it's more in just your general everyday situations right. that I get this kind of like, mm, I don't know about this, you know? Um, and I kind of go back and forth. You have good days, you have bad days. You know, I yeah. think we all do. Though. Oh gosh. Yeah. yeah. Everybody has insecurities. I yeah. think it's just, we don't see everybody's yeah right like <laughs> well that's the thing i'm like i i went up i'm like okay lord how come i have to have the insecurity that people can see um, why yeah. is that <laughs> you know like people have all kinds of struggles right mm-hmm. but 90 percent of them you don't see, see they're an internal battle and internal mm-hmm. struggle that those people are fighting and we don't know you know i don't know what you're fighting i don't right. know what you're fighting but people can see mine physically every day so they know if I'm doing well, not doing well. And it sometimes it bothers me. And I'm like, okay, why do I have to, ha- why is that? Mm-hmm. Why was that chosen for me? Or why do I choose that? You, you know, know depending it's on almost, your perspective. <clears throat> I almost want to um, guide you to one of our guests we had on, Valerie, who yeah. it's almost, I mean, she had different issues as you, obviously, but the same thing. And she came on the show and she told her whole story. And since then, Spider knows within she one has, year. Yeah. <clears throat> she has turned into something completely different. Mm-hmm. I mean, she has, how much weight did she lose? I can't a even lot. remember. I'm not like, sure of the poundage, but she I looks completely putting different. putting it on in Facebook. Yeah, like over 100 pounds or something. I mean, That's just awesome. been crazy for her. She, and she always says something. And I think it's difficult with people like you. You have seven children that you birthed and then you have two more. So you have nine <laughs> children that you actually take care of. And where does that leave time for you? Because right. that's really what she says in a nutshell. I mean, I don't know all the details, but basically that's what she says. She just finally took time for herself to take care of herself. Yeah, do you even have that time? No. For you? I can't imagine. No, it, it's cyclical. And that's why I say probably my biggest downfall is the consistency. Because right. I tend to ramrod things, you know, I'm very 
<clears throat> very black and white. You know, my, my ex-husband used to call me a freight train because once I get my mind on something, like there's literally nothing going to get in my way. I don't, um, you know, if I tell you I'm, I'm going to go, you know, just for example, I'm going to go make a million dollars. Well, I'm going to go figure it out. <laughs> like I will figure it out. It may take me 10 years. It may take me whatever, but I will do it if that's a decision I make. Mm-hmm. So I find it interesting because I can, I can make a decision to, yeah, I'm kind of feeling uncomfortable. I need to get 20 pounds off. And I'm telling you, I'll ramrod them and have it done in 30 days. Like it won't even, I won't even blink. And I'm on it like every single, you know. So like Monday I started, you know, I told her a new detox. I got to get the sugar out of my body, you know, started boot camp. And those first few days are like, hell, you know, it's like, oh my God. I'm like, seriously, I am this out of shape. This is horrific. But I'm going to push through, right. you know, because I have made the decision that do it. no You're more, doing it. you know, no more. Good for you though. That's, yeah. that's incredible. Now let me go back and go back to your first husband. You met him at 17. Did you get married right away? We married when I was 21. Oh. Um, and then we, we did music together. You know, I did, um, I had a manager at that time, went to Nashville Similar story, you know, told, hey, you're, you're beautiful, but you're too fat. No way. Why don't you go become a plus size model (gasps) and then come back when you've got a following. Um, Other things they would say would be. um, They said that to you? Oh, yes. Yeah. There's no, it's ruthless in the industry for sure. (laughs) Oh my gosh. Um, You know, they, and I was not even, golly, I was. I wouldn't even have, I was maybe a size 10, so I wouldn't even have considered myself. And I'm, you know, I'm not as tall as y'all, but I'm fairly tall in, in the scheme of things. So I carry a size 10 pretty well. Um, but it's, you know, that's wow. like my goal weight. <laughs> how, how, how do you handle something yeah. like that? You just kind of. Um, you know, I think, I think um, it's, a, it's a thick skin, obviously. Mm-hmm. You know, I'm telling the boys this all the time. Like, you will be rejected. For over sure, yeah. and over and over and over. And that's life in general, too. Mm-hmm. But especially if you want to do anything within a media industry of any kind. And um, so that's part of it. The other part is, I don't know if it was just an innate determination from the time I was little. I don't know if it's rebellion in a way. <laughs> but it was like, oh, don't tell me I can't do that yeah. because I will go prove you wrong. And I've kind of spent my life doing that like right. setting out to prove them wrong no i wasn't going to make it the way they said but i'll but figure it out i'll do it my way um as frank sinatra said <laughs> <laughs> so i uh, we rick and i played all over the place you know i played live in a lot of the jamborees like i said um you know we we postponed our honeymoon so that i could open for tracy bird who was the biggest thing at that time um oh. that's dating so and you aging kind of me. like I mean, in that arena, you kind of like on your way to making it uh, early was, on. Like, I was how working old are you hard. Now? I was 21. Yeah. You know, I was working hard at it. Um, and then I had, uh, we moved to Minnesota. Um, we've had a roofing company for several years. So we moved for a hailstorm and, you know, had gotten married. And then I, um, no children got, yet. No children okay. yet. So then I got pregnant with Mav. Uh, I was 23 when I had him and Arlen came 13 months later. (laughs) Like we started moving around and there was this shift that was going on at the time emotionally and mentally. Um, You know, my, my, my ex-husband and I don't think he would, I think he would be okay with me saying this. We discuss this topic often and, and it helps people. So that's why I'm willing to say so. But my husband struggled with love and sex addiction and it's a real thing, y'all. Like, if you go do the studies and the scientific studies of what, you know, watching pornography does to your brain, it's like a chemical. For Literally this. creates, like, um, cocaine addiction in your brain. It's as bad as heroin and cocaine. Watching, in, watching it causes the same response and reaction to the neurons in your brain as doing those drugs. It is that crazy. Wow. Um, and it's the science behind it that would blow your mind because for years I was like, yeah, you know, whatever. So we kind of had this ongoing struggle for 20 years of when did you know that that was an issue? I knew before when we met. I mean, I knew when we met and I just I don't know if it's 
I just loved him so much, Mm -hmm. you know, to the core of my body that it was like, I just was willing to put up with it. So, um, I'd question it. So, I mean, it was a very tumultuous relationship and at the same time, amazing because we were best friends because I mean, we could literally spend 24 seven together. It's and pretty, you did music together. And we which did music is its together. own magic. Yes. And so we sang together. He played piano. You know, we did gigs. We do piano gigs. And then we had all these babies coming, <laughs> you know, and and that was kind of his stress outlet, you know, um, but he kind of needed that pat on the back from women, you know, in one sense or another. And so over time, it just escalated and became something that, um, you know, we had to go, okay, this is not, this is not for a marriage. Like this isn't good. And it just got really, you know, rough. And can you tell what happened? Yeah. Uh, we had, um, so just kind of fast forward. Um, we were living our life. Um, we'd had Maverick and Harlan, we had Zayden. He was nine months old, and I went to audition for American Idol. Wow. And by this time, I was um, I was singing in church pretty much every week of the year. So, like, my whole life was church. Like, it was, like, um, non-denominational um, Christian church. And pretty much, you know, Wednesday rehearsal, Friday home group, Saturday, whatever, women's Bible study, Sunday's church. I mean, it was just, that was our life for several years, eight, nine, 10 years, maybe Were you even lead more. Singer? I was one on the one team, the, mm-hmm. you know, on the team. And my friend Kevin, who actually nine year anniversary of him passing away was yesterday, oh, no. but he, uh, from cancer, but he, he was like my soul, you know, I mean, he just, he was my heart. He taught me like true worship not in the music sense but in the heart sense wow and he just told me that it wasn't about how good I was it wasn't about what I brought to the table from the stage it was about what my heart was directing and what I was doing with that and it completely changed my perspective from being a performer on stage to someone that can could draw in people to the experience because you can feel it I'm sure right Mm -hmm. so um it just it changed everything for me so then I did American Idol I made the top 75 um when it aired uh the the first the first audition with the producers he told me goes you look so much like a mom he said can you can you like change your attire and I was like I have three kids dude like (laughs) like a mom (laughs) okay fine I mean I was 28 at the time oh my gosh and uh (laughs) So I'm like, all right. And so I went and went to Torrid, which at the time was like new, you know, like it was the yeah. newest plus size thing. And I was like, okay, I can wear something kind of, you know, cool. And I never thought of myself as have not having style or being too conservative or whatnot, but <laughs> put something on that was, you know, a little more ratty looking and <laughs> teased up my hair more <laughs> or whatever. Um, and tried to be what they wanted me to be, which was a complete and total mistake. I should Um, have just done what I knew Mm -hmm. I did best. And, um, but it was a great learning experience. It was the year Carrie Underwood won. Honest to goodness. I feel like because I sang country because she sang country, it's kind of like maybe some competition because many people made it beyond that should have never made that that top 24 Mm -hmm. um if you guys could see the talent and i'm not just talking about myself if you could see the talent that was turned away Mm -hmm. it would blow your mind i mean unreal and then the people that get the airtime Uh versus not so my airtime and they never even showed me singing they showed simon cowell saying you look like an elephant and (gasps) then a shot of my face going (gasps) and that was my airtime and so i shut down I pretty much was like, why in the hell am I even doing this? Yes. Which was not even part of like my audition process. It was just the editing room floor is not a nice place. No. Mm -hmm. Wait, so that wasn't even for you? No, we we had had a conversation (laughs) about a high school play where there was a a character that was an elephant. It was like totally sideline. Totally sidetracked, had nothing to do with the singing, totally different time. It was the, it was insane. But that's even horrible. I mean, for you, but also for Simon Cowell, I'd be like, I didn't say that about her. Like that was part of his personality. Oh yeah. yeah, I know. But to call someone an elephant, that's so mean. I don't, 
like that whole the whole thing is for them to sell people absolutely you know, like I that's what you're saying i'm not offended by him i actually adore simon cowell i think he is a you know he liked me uh, randy and paula were the other um judges at that time you know they all let me know they they loved me they they liked what i had to offer um, paula pulled me aside in the hallway and was like hey if you don't make it just know it has nothing to do with your talent which i thought sp- spoke volumes you know to her i was in spite of the mess of it all and the aftermath and people getting airtime and not getting airtime. And, you know, so it was, it was a frustrating process. Um, but in spite of that, there were some good things that came out of it, obviously preparing myself for down the road, mm-hmm. which I had no idea at that time, but I had a lot of questions for God at that time. I'm sure. You know? But it's interesting you're saying that because me, as I used to love American Idol and I watched it all the time and, I had no idea you were on that season, but what I do remember of that season is the interviews before the show ever aired, Simon Cowell said, we have found the biggest star we have ever found. Amen. And he announced Carrie, mm-hmm. he announced her before she ever won or anything. So right. if she was competition, then they had already made that decision, it feels like, right. almost. I, I mean, it is. it's like we would like... You know, reality TV, as I say, isn't reality. I mean, they they choose how they want the outcome. They choose even for mm-hmm. my show. You mm-hmm. know, I, I feel very blessed mm-hmm. at the outcome. I got <laughs> fortunate with National Star, but in the in the in the general scheme of life of reality TV, they figure out what they want and then they build everything else around it. Mm-hmm. You know, so and with these competitions, you know, they've got voting, so they kind of have to. They kind of yeah. have to rig it because right. it's like, oh, well, we can't put someone too good. I mean. Oh, God, I can't remember her name from season one or what. It was like so, the girl with the colored hair and she's from Dallas. But it's like, oh, she wasn't supposed to make it that far. You know, like people would talk yeah. about that all the time when Kelly Clarkson won, mm-hmm. which who totally deserved to win. You know, right. she's incredible. Um, but I mean, this is just the life of of these shows, even yeah. even The Voice. I mean, I have several friends that have been on The Voice um, I've been asked to audition. I've auditioned a couple times and not even made it to the producer side. So for the voice, yeah, wow. Well, I know so, that with so you think you can dance. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I did so you think you can dance, and they um, we saw so. I mean, even you heard about the people that were so talented that didn't make it past producers, and you're like, well, I mean, that's crazy to see. And then they'll yeah. take dancers who are horrible with that crumping stuff like silly. Yeah, it's just talent. Things. That's like that's. <laughs> Why would you take that? But I think they already know because they need a story. They need, they need like, the story the for characters. sure. Yeah. I mean, if I could teach a class to people on how to get on a reality <laughs> show, I bet I could be getting people on all day <laughs> yeah. long because you just got to find your story. Yeah. You stick to it. You stick in that niche and you can get on no matter your talent level. Mm-hmm. Right. It's all about that. Yeah. So, so tell, um, that happened. So you said mm-hmm. you shut down. Like I emotionally. Did. I, I quit singing for like almost three years. What? Um, I just didn't want anything to do with it. Mm-hmm. I was like, okay, Lord, if this is, this is the way it's going to be, then I'm over it. Uh, had a couple more babies. <laughs> <laughs> so now we're at four. Uh, now we're at five. Five. Okay. So I had three, then I had Xander two years later and I had a Riker two years okay. after that. So by the time Riker, I was pregnant with Riker, I was singing back at church. I kind of, okay, you know, I'll sing at church. Um, and when I was pregnant with him, I had I had gained up to 300 pounds. Um, after I had him, I was right at 300. And I was like, okay, enough is enough. Like, enough is enough in general. Not just my weight, but like, I am not in life where I want to be, where I want to go. There's so much more that I want to do, that I feel called to do, That I f- and I had been teaching my kids since they were born that we should live our life for our purpose and passion, you know, that we are called to a purpose and I'm like, I'm not doing that. And how <laughs> so, old are you at this point? Uh, I had Riker at 31. Okay. So when I was pregnant, I told Rick, I said, you know, I'm going to spend, I'm going to have Riker. I'm going to spend a year trying to get this weight off. And then I'm going to spend a year trying to go after the contemporary Christian, you know, worship vein and just see what happens. And if it happens, great. If the doors open, great. If they don't, that's Okay. I'm satisfied with that portion of my life. I'll just keep leading worship and that'll be my thing. Um, but, <laughs> and that was, I had him in August. 
the end of August. So by the middle of September, I kind of started on this little journey and girls, I could not even get to the mailbox. Like it was that bad. My, it was so hard to walk. It was painful. It was, I was winded. It was just really rough. And the breaking moment for me was trying to get up the stairs to go give the boys a bath. And I got up like three or four stairs and I had to stop because I was so tired. The thought of getting up the rest of the stairs, I was like, I am not doing my kids justice. Yeah. I can't even care for them the way they need to be cared for or want to be cared for. You right. know, I have to bring them down to my bath. And, you know, I mean, it just I wasn't doing what I needed to do. So I was like, OK, that's it. And so <laughs> um, <laughs> so I that kind of started me on the the weight loss. Like, I'm going to do this. I've, I had always dieted. And so I decided I was done with that. I was just going to make some small changes. I was going to give up one thing at a time that I could live with. So I gave a Coke and sweet tea first because I was probably getting down at least six or seven 32 ounce Cokes or sweet tea in a day. That's impressive. No. So <laughs> yeah, I go to McDonald's. I'm like, shh, 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 love that stuff. So um, just quit drinking that. That was my first change. And then from there, I baby stepped it and I made some shifts. You know, I shifted from from flour tortillas to low carb and then ultimately to corn. You know, like just some different changes. Mm-hmm. Um, and, you know, pasta, I didn't want to give up pasta. So I went to whole grain pasta. And so I just made these like shifts in what I was eating. It's not so overwhelming, like right. totally ripping everything away. Exactly. Once, yeah. I, I hired a personal trainer. Um, we trained at the park down the road outside. So some days it was, you know, we're in Texas, hundred and something degrees oh, and some days it was cold mm-hmm. and or some days it was rainy, but I was on it. And so I was about 25 pounds down, which isn't a whole lot, you know, in the scheme of things from 300, but, but 25 pounds. That's right. Mm-hmm. And they do say, you know, like heart disease, 10% takes off your risk significantly. And my friend or my dad called, he was like, Hey, you need to go. Nashville star is auditioning in Austin. And I said, hell no, (laughs) I'm not going to that. I am not going to go put myself in another vulnerable position to just be torn down. I'm just, I'm not going to do it. And, um, and I'm not ready. Like I had this whole plan in my mind, you know, it was my plan, my plan. Right. So, um, and I didn't have the money. It was spring break coming up is when it was going to be. So I'm like, how am I going to get to Austin? How am I going to pay to get there? The kid, I got all the kids, you know, So, um, I went to church that Sunday prior to this, to spring break and I was walking across the campus, pretty big campus. And this lady stopped me. I have not seen her since and did not know her before. No way. She said, Hey, she goes, do you know where, where, um, the worship pastor's box is, his mailbox? And I said, yeah, in the office. And she goes, I put something in there for you. And, and she goes, I just love listening to you sing. And I was like, okay. So I walk back over there and I open this bulletin and inside is a check for a hundred bucks. And it says, thanks for your ministry. Oh. And the, my first thought was, and I, it was like audible, there's your money to get down there. And I was like, no, <laughs> I'm still not going. I'm not going to go by myself. So I called my, I called like two friends that I knew like wouldn't be able to go subconsciously. <laughs> like they have children and they have jobs. They're like, no, can't go, can't go. And, um, of course, Rick needed to stay home with the kids because that wasn't going to be realistic. And then, um, so I called my brother, he was moving from, he, I just have one brother. He's three years younger than me. And he was literally moving from Katy, Texas home that day driving. And I called, I was like, Oh, do you think you can make it? Come pick me up and let's go to Austin. Cause I'm thinking there's no way. And he goes, Heck yeah. He's like, Uh okay. So he drives four hours later. We get in the car. We turn around, go to Austin, stay in a hotel. The next morning, it's pouring rain outside. Um, We get to the hotel that the audition's at, go inside. Um, They had John Rich there. They had Big and Rich come and sing, you know, Save a Horse, Ride a Cowboy, and do some other stuff and walked me in with the producers and um, did my thing. I sang Natural Woman for my audition. And they loved it. And they were like, okay, round two. And so I stayed later in the day. We went through round two. Then they did like a uh, face-to-face interview on camera. Um, And then it was a waiting game. Then it was like, okay, you'll hear from us within, I can't think it was 30 days, you know, three, four days. So I went back home. 
I wrote a song that night that I ended up performing on the show. And I had I had started to write songs like in my past, you know, I'd always start something and just not finish it. <laughs> what was that song called? Uh, it's called Ready to Stand. It's it's on iTunes. Cool. Um, and I got in the bath and started this song and I was like, OK. And I, it just came to me. It was about being in in the rain, you know, and waiting for waiting for this opportunity, yeah. you know. And so um, just kind of a it was it was like an outlet. And my friend Margie had come over because I, I did not I don't play a whole lot. I play enough guitar to get by. That's about it. <laughs> and um, so my friend Margie came over and we finished kind of finished forming it that next day. And so it was, it was neat. Cause I was like, and the reason I did it, it started was because I knew my dad had told me he watched every season leading up to that. I'd never even seen one episode. It was on, um, Oh, what was that cable I have station? It. I have it. It was, I have it. I have it. <laughs> yeah. Um, not, it not was, TLC. It was USA. USA. Yeah. Mm-hmm. USA. But well, then the, it was on NBC. Yeah. But the year I did it, it moved to NBC. Right. So that was a big deal, obviously, moving from from USA to NBC. That's a huge deal. And plus um, season six is, so that's a lot long, I mean, a lot of seasons yeah. for a show. Yeah, they did well. I, I mean, sadly, that was, you know, my I'll be forever reigning, which is the, the last only positive. <laughs> yeah. but so you're the last. <laughs> I'm the last yeah. one. What you know? year is this? That was 2008. Okay. Mm-hmm. Okay. 2008. So it's been a while. <laughs> but um, we... We, uh, I knew I had to write an original because if you made it to like the third or fourth week, you had to play an original song. And I was like, I don't have one. Oh, oh my God. So that's how that came to fruition. And thankfully I had it for original song week, you know? <laughs> right. So, cause I thought surely I can make it three or four weeks, you know, if, even if I don't get further, but if I could just make it yeah. far enough, you know? So the idea was just to have the experience. So then the next step was I came home and I told Rick, I said, I do not know why, but if I don't say this out loud, I'll never forgive myself. But I said, I have this knowing in my heart, I'm going to win this show. And he goes, Oh, well baby, of course you're going to win. You're amazing. And you know, and I said, no, it's not like that. It's not like, Oh, I know I'm going to win. I'm amazing. It wasn't that it was like just this sense of knowing you know, I, d- I don't know how to explain it other than just God saying to me, like, let me just prepare you, you know, you're going to do this. And I'm like, OK. And that was before I'd even gotten the next call back. So then they called me again and we did like a phone interview. Then they called me again and we had to go for the top 50 to Nashville. So I went to Nashville um, and the top 50 auditioned. It was extremely nerve wracking. Oh, I can only uh, imagine. Yeah. <laughs> so like, we're meeting all these people and you're kind of going, Oh, I heard them sing. Oh my God. You know, like, are we going to make it? Who's going to make it? And I've already been through idol. So I'm like, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> you know, sat down with the boys before I left for that. And I said, look, here's what we're facing. You know, you guys are we're really too little probably to remember idol, but now this is where we are. Riker was a baby. He was nine months. Actually, he would have been oh seven gosh. months at this time. And I said, if mom makes it onto this show, I have to leave you and I won't be here for a while. And so what That's do you so think about to that? Even take on. I, could, I don't think I would have ever had the, I would never have done that. I can't even imagine. Yeah. That's amazing. Well, I, I have some amazing kids and I oh, try not to cry, but I mean, they said, mom, you know, you, you have something, you have something to give the world and you need to go do this. Yeah. It's what you love. It's what God's called you to do. Like you need to go do it and we'll be fine. And I'm like, okay then, you know, so we made the decision as a family for mm-hmm. me to go. I think it's a really good message that I think moms for moms mm-hmm. or people who have kids that you can still go for whatever dreams you might have. And that's okay. Like it's for sure. I mean, we sacrifice, you know, we sacrifice so much and our kids do have a need, you know, to come first. And at the same time, you know, we we're trying to parent them to learn to be productive, you know, (laughs) adults in life. And so, I mean, how can we teach them if we're doing everything for them, right? As their mom, which a lot of moms do unintentionally. Yes. But how are we teaching them to really do what they were put on earth? to do you know whatever their their calling is right 
So, and, and no matter, you know, no matter your belief or religion or background or anything like that, and I've, I've come, I'm, I'm in a whole different place today than I was at that time. We've talked a lot about church, but, um, I still, you know, have a firm belief that we all have something to give, you know, on the earth to help with the overall greatness of, of the world, you know, mm-hmm. and people, and this, we all have gifts and talents to give. You right. Know? Now, so, let me just really quickly get to a point. So you, you decide as a family that you're going to go. Right. And uh, what's your marriage status at this time? Like, how is your marriage? You're married how many years at this point? Let's see. That was 2008. I was married 11 years and together for 15. And was it in a good place? Were you feeling anxious to leave him? Like, not no, with the kids, but just as a I would a say it was wife. in a good place. It was in a it was good in a place. a good place then. I mean, we still had these, these struggles, you know, that were ongoing. But there was nothing that was, like, earth-shattering, um... I'm done with you, you know, right. kind of thing. Um, so I was still, I was still hanging on, <laughs> right, <laughs> hanging on to hope, you know, and believing God would help or whatever. Um, but then when I left, I was gone for three months. I was sequestered, um, so we couldn't. Three months yeah, we couldn't. That's crazy. That sounds like we a- lived in the Gaylord Opryland Hotel oh, really? and in this one hallway. <laughs> So I literally would do, I mean, I was on it with my food and my workouts, right? Because I was on this weight loss journey that started and continued through the process. And so um, I uh, was walking up and down the halls to get my workouts in because they wouldn't let me go down to the gym. And ultimately they're like, fine, we'll let you go down to the gym. Like, because they didn't want us to know anything going on in the outside world. You know, it's part of just keeping the drama up Mm -hmm. for the TV. But uh, we had no phones, no TVs, no newspapers, because we couldn't know who people were liking or not liking. And every week was nerve wracking. But I just had a piece about it. I mean, it was nerve wracking. Like, I never knew from week to week, you know, you never know who people are voting Mm -hmm. for. And they might not like me. I mean, Mm -hmm. I just, you you don't know. So I'm like, okay. Can we do something really quickly? Yeah. I want to take a break. Okay. For this show, I want to go to our question of the day, and then I was going to ask you, would you mind performing twice for us in this no, show sure, once, huh? and then sure. the second? I was going to have you sing a song after we do that, and then part two, I want to know all about what happened when you got there, okay, and <laughs> the steps and of what happened after that, and okay. then what happened to your life after that, because right. I know it's a, a it's big good, story, so I want everyone to make That's sure. <laughs> It's, it's messy. Beautiful. It's disaster. messy. Life is messy. A beautiful disaster. <laughs> right? Um, so what we're going to do first, I want to start with the question of the day. The two posh girls ask the question of the day. For me today is, it's been in the news so much and I have had a lot of thoughts about it and I wanted to hear what you guys thought. <clears throat> How do you feel about the scandal with the parents? Felicity Huffman and Lori Loughlin paying all that money to get their children into the top UCLA. colleges, UCLA, and taking spots of children that should have had it, getting them on sports teams, like rowing teams. They have never rowed a day in their life. Um, they cheated their SAT scores. They cheated scores. their SAT scores and all the above. Tell me how you guys feel about that. Well, Eric, go first. Yeah, I'm kind of a firm believer of you got to earn it. So, yeah. I mean. That, I mean, here that, you are, you have nine kids, mm-hmm. seven kids that still have to go to college. And imagine yeah. here you are, you are st- working so hard. St- I mean, getting <clears throat> them yeah, just to. Just making them, you know, making sure they get an opportunity. Right. I mean, even my oldest, he's in college right now and. He might not like me saying this, but you know, he's kind of dropping the ball. That's, I mean, that's just being honest. <laughs> mm-hmm. He is not putting forth his best foot. Um, I'm not sure why he's making those choices, but that's his choice to make. We'll mm-hmm. have to learn you know? from that. And yeah, and he will yeah. learn from that. And the thing is like, cause I do have a brother that, that has struggled with drug addiction his whole life. And um, he's 40 now and he's, uh, or this week he'll be 40. And so I've watched him being enabled his whole life. Mm. And so it has caused me to do like the 100% opposite. And so, you know, the minute my kids start falling down, I'm like, yep, sorry, (laughs) (laughs) hands off. And it is, it's really hard. It's really hard to do, but oh my gosh, how in the world? I don't know about you. I can't, I cannot honestly sleep at night Mm -hmm. or stand somewhere and look my kids in the face and go, 
great job, honey. <laughs> Let me just write the check for you. Uh, like, yeah. No, I'll, I'll help you. I'll invest in you and I'll assist you. But you're going to have to do the work. I'm not. I can't do the work for 11 people. Mm-mm. You know, I physically just can't. I think it's disgusting. I mean, for me, I'm like, you you already live such a privileged life. Like, you have been blessed. You have opportunities mm-hmm. at every turn you take. You well, especially the kids of celebrities. I feel right. like they get they already get handed opportunities. Mm-hmm. But now, I mean, they're in big trouble. I mean, her one of uh, the, Lori Laughlin's daughter, like, well, they dropped out of school because they said they're getting they bullied now. Yeah. And then they um, lost a makeup line. They've lost, they got dropped. She got dropped from Fuller House. They lost jobs. They lost. So it's kind of at what cost. And I think the truth always comes out. But now always. I'm like, oh my gosh, you were so lucky already. Like to be born into a celebrity home. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, you see even like Real Housewives or all these people's kids get opportunities that people are really kind of dying for. And I think they made big big mistake that's awful i think i mean i am like i have no sympathy at all and they are saying now that they're they're just now they can't even wrap their head around that they may really go to jail they may have to go to jail for five years and i'm i hope they do well, i mean that has Felicity to be huffman they said the swat came in her house yeah. can you imagine Six SWAT officers. They're, they're all that's sleeping mm-hmm. and then they came in but i think weren't their kids like in on it though like everybody was i don't know one of them i read was like didn't even want to go to school she was kind uh, that of was before forced. anything ever happened yeah <laughs> that she posted something that was like i don't care about learning anything oh, i just want I to go for that. the parties yeah uh-huh. and she oh, said she didn't even try yeah. yeah she's like i don't even try at school mm-hmm. homework it's all right mm-hmm. yeah so now you're not going okay end up, you know, so with fine you do. don't want to do the work like my son you get the consequence yeah you know because guess what happens next i mean what should be happening is that that school should be saying you didn't cut you didn't cut the bill you didn't fit it you mm-hmm. didn't do it so guess what you're on academic suspension mm-hmm. oh guess what we're not going to pay FAFSA is not going to help you guess what you're mm-hmm. not getting your dorm next semester guess what like those right. are the consequences real life people like if you don't teach these kids what are you teaching them mm-hmm. right. you know I mean really I'm it's what are you scary. teaching them and it's who it's cares scary. what your bank account is mm-hmm. right. you know okay so I can get my kid a more dependable vehicle, maybe then another family might be able to get theirs. But at the same time, my kids are paying for half, you know, like yeah. they have to provide towards it Yeah, because otherwise they're going to think, here you go. Let me hand this to you. Everything to you. Yeah. I think it's really important. It goes through all things. Cause we say, I mean, we're not political people at all, but we do say like Trump's kids are all really good like he came from so much money and they had to work for a lot of stuff Mm -hmm. and then I know very well privileged kids who are drug addicts and Mm -hmm. have major they don't work they get everything handed to them everything gets paid off but they've been to rehab and they've been they get bailed out of everything they've been to jail 30 times and it's like where it's not teaching them anything if you Mm -hmm. don't no matter how much money you have you still have to make kids work for it I think yeah yeah and and to me the earlier the better you know, let yeah. them learn it because they're going to fall. The harder you let them fall, you know, the I mean, you don't want your child to fall. The pain of that and watching it is extremely difficult. Right. But at the same time, if you will allow them to do so, the faster they'll get back up because they'll hit that rock bottom, whatever that is for them. Mm-hmm. You know, right. and you hope that will be enough to turn them around to the, right. you know, right. yeah. to the next thing. But I'd rather my kid were 20 or 25 or 18 doing that versus 30 40 50 you know yeah, just trying yeah. to still figure it yeah. out right so none of us agree no everyone is <laughs> upset about it no. um so now let's go to our other segment <laughs> our penis and pussy talk with miss polly uh-huh. we're calling her in on skype today this is penis and pussy talk with miss polly hello miss right. polly <laughs> hi miss polly can you hear us all right I can hear you. Can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Great. We're here with Melissa Lawson. She is the Nashville star winner of 2006. Can you imagine? 2008. 2008. Oh, my God. I got that wrong. Season six. Season six. That's all good. Who cares what year? (laughs) We'll pretend it was last year. (laughs) We're still the winner. Exactly. (laughs) And and she had, she, her children go to the same school as Jolie and she has seven boys, Miss Polly, seven boys. 
Oh, my Lanta. <laughs> <laughs> she gave birth to all of them. <laughs> <I did. laughs> and one is in college and she has some teens and uh, little ones. But our question for you today on Penis and Pussy Talk with Miss Polly <laughs> is we want to know the true toll of porn on teenagers oh, because they have so much um, accessibility with their phones and all the internet today that that is starting to be a real problem. And um, I read an article of how terrible it is for our teens and I wanted to hear your opinion on it. Well, it is pretty much the same as most <clears throat> sex therapists that I've talked to as well as, I mean, one of them being Dr. Ian Kerner, who is amazing when it comes, he's written several books and very much into what effect this has on not just our teens, but our young adults and even those in their early 20s and 30s. And it's kind of, Said that because of the propensity of pornography and their of accessibility, a couple of clicks and you can see hardcore pornography. And anywhere, you know, these kids are hiding the behavior from their parents uh, because they don't want to talk about it. And hello, we don't talk about sex education in school nowadays. Right. right. So where they're learning sex is from porn. It's not healthy. It's so sad. And sad. It, it's very sad because this is what causes all these psychological issues that young girls are having body issues mm -hmm. because they see what the girls in porn look like. Well, these girls have been lasered. They've been shaped. They have 80% of them have breast implants. So you have young women who think, oh, my God, I need anal bleach, and I'm supposed to be having anal sex. Uh -huh. Oh, my Lanta, what are we going to do? I can't do that. And they, they don't even say no anymore yeah. because that's what they're supposed to They think that's what it's supposed to be like. Right. And plus there's that whole over-masturbation and over-stimulation that these children, and I call them children because they are still kids. Mm -hmm. And it causes erectile dysfunction. I see so many young men, and I can, you know, 20s, 30s, having ED problems, erectile dysfunction problems, and most of it's a result of the over-masturbation and the overstimulation from pornography. So what can we do about this? Talk honestly and openly to your kids it's hard because that you know we used to get nervous you know about having that sex talk but kids as young as eight yep. nine ten years old are having oral sex yeah oh. oral sex and you know grade school junior high wow Oh yeah. my gosh, I can't even imagine. Yeah. Well, what, was the, uh, what was the thing that we talked about the one time where, I can't remember what you called it, but it was like you wouldn't have penetrative sex because uh, you couldn't, because of the Bible or whatever, but everything else was cool. Oh mm -hmm. God, I had, because yeah. I, oh, yeah. I work with teenagers, I had kids tell me that a lot of kids in school, like it's, it, when you say it, it shocked me, I like laughed because I was like, you've got to be kidding, but they were saying that anal sex is god's loophole that's god's actually loophole. That's right. what they were that's saying freaky. to me and these are girls like i mean these are church going families these are people who are when you look at them they look like your cookie cutter like you know good girls who are just doing these things because they have had guys or whatever is telling them that that's an okay thing and i'm like what oh my gosh it's, that's crazy it's because of the shame the mm -hmm. shame and, and we'll obviously we'll get to this in mm -hmm. the other episode when we talk about some more of this but it has to do with the the, the church as a whole shaming people yep. mm -hmm. for sex mm -hmm. and shaming children into thinking this is not okay until 
And it is a just it's just a wrong way to Approach teach our children it, yeah. about intimacy. Mm-hmm. It shouldn't be linked to shame. It should be linked to intimacy mm-hmm. and what that should look like mm-hmm. for a couple. I agree. And I think that a lot of parents only because I work with a lot of children and I've seen it through the years and I know Miss Polly can agree because she was with me a lot. A lot of parents don't talk to their kids about at all or they just say it's bad and you're bad if you do it. And so then the kids will actually talk to me or somebody else and they'll rebel if you're not speaking openly. I know that my mom and I had very open discussions about it where I just felt really comfortable to tell her. So I didn't really feel like I needed to do anything crazy I didn't I just knew that it was an open conversation that I had no fear of talking to her about anything like that I read a statistics that um parents think that their children don't want to they don't want them to talk to wait how do I say this correctly the the kids no parents think that kids don't want them to be the ones talking to them but it's actually 80% of the children want only their parents to talk mm-hmm. well, they to want them to feel about like it. they're not going to get in trouble right? right because we say this is bad this right. is bad like in the United States you can't drink till you're 21 you can't do this you can't do that so there's all these rules and regulations and I think that they feel like they'll be in trouble when mm-hmm. that parent is the best person to talk to and you don't I think you need to be careful how you talk to your kids about it and not make them feel you want them to come to you about right. that stuff because I think that's how you get unexpected pregnancy in high school and all For those things sure. and STDs and anal sex and all these things that are just way crazy for these young children. I mean, the stuff I hear working with kids and what they know, they know a lot more than anybody yeah. can imagine. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Well, they know a lot more because it's more accessible to them Mm -hmm. in terms of what they want to like search for. I mean, you search anything on the internet, you can consult the Google and the Google will tell you whatever it is you know. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. But do you want your kid learning sex from Google? No, (laughs) no, no, you really don't. But here's the thing too. And I think this is a problem I think in America is, the lack of true sex education in schools too. Yeah, Mm -hmm. for sure. Mm -hmm. If you're relying completely and solely on the parent to educate them, and this is something when I was doing, you know, pure romance that bothered me is so many women came up to me and said, I wish you could teach sex education to my child. I wish you could have a class where I could bring my teenage daughter and my teenage son and learn the realities of what, you know, their body parts are. And when, because they don't always know and they don't understand the effects of not using lubricant or anal sex without lubricant or any of these things, <laughs> how much damage they can do to their bodies. Oh, oh my gosh. <laughs> Miss Polly, on that note, mm-hmm. we're going to thank you for the penis and pussy talk today with Miss Polly, but we're going to come back in the next um, show and we're going to get a little more into how parents can actually attempt to talk to their teens about that and you're going to help us all do that (laughs) and we'll call you back in a little bit and thank you so much for today and this was penis and pussy talk with miss polly we love you (laughs) love you we need like a jingle now we do need a jingle (laughs) i asked him to he's making one okay good we'll We'll call you back (laughs) 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 so would you pick what song you would like to sing for us Oh, I'm so excited. I'm so excited. I was trying to think. Give me a second. I might be able to work out ready to stand just since it makes sense. Yeah. What we were talking about. Uh, I want you to know that um, they had a party and the kids had a sleepover and she sang with her son playing guitar and Jolie literally texted me and said, Mommy, I think she has the voice of an angel. I have never heard something like this before. (laughs) She really did. I can't wait to hear about how your kids like all started singing. You gotta listen to the podcast. (laughs) Yeah, that's true. Uh, They're talented as hell. That's Mm -hmm. all I know.
<laughs> I can't even tell you the last time I played this one. So, so this is the song that you are original song that you sang a Nashville Star competition, correct? Yes. Um, it's called Ready to Stand. And like I said, I, I wrote this and then my friend Margie, we kind of finished it up um, together and uh, <laughs> hopefully I don't totally, you know, royally mess this up, but we'll I see. I bet you won't. It's been, I'm like, can I remember the words even? Like that, I wrote it. Can I remember them? All right. This morning and I stood in a line It was pouring down rain and cold outside But I didn't care I was there for a reason I traveled down this road before Been slammed in the backside by the door You think I'd learn my lesson But in my years of living this great life There were moments of redemption and of strife the first time i've only heard a kid sing so far that was amazing oh, the kids sing on here too. Unbelievable. oh my gosh yeah sorry. so jealous a little, a little I mean, rough but i feel like i've right. heard her a little bit yeah. because i've watched. seen her and watched her but this is unbelievable i've always said if i could sing i feel like i'd sing everywhere mm -hmm. like i would sing when i order starbucks <laughs> but i can't sing <laughs> i can't it's not good so my <laughs> mom my mom goes you know how your parents will go around like telling these stories it's like the same one they say so yeah. she'll she'll always say my grandma would always tell her and she would say melissa would just sing everything like from the time she was three i need to go potty, I need to potty. <laughs> like and that's always the thing she says. realized like, like a, a musical <laughs> do you know <laughs> I, I i have to say something now that i have to say it because i have to say it like you had to say it you are gonna make it something's yes. gonna happen i just know it that has to it Thank is you. just i know that inside of me like you knew you were gonna win that show there's no way you don't Thank this you. is incredible. so good. It's just, you don't need I think all need you and your kids just need to be famous. That's what I said. You don't need too. to go on America's Got Talent. That's what We've I said. We've talked about it. <laughs> you know, I'm like, well, this time around, I'll take the kids with me or they'll take me with them. Yeah. yeah. Old, but whatever. I, mean, I think it's awesome. Yeah, You're going to make it. fun. Thank so, you. So on this note, everyone, we're going to end this show. And please come back for part two with Melissa Lawson. Uh, part two is going to blow you away so everyone thank you for listening <laughs>